Thomas Halleck here, the University of South Florida, St. Petersburg, with a three minute lesson for the road course in American literature today on the DeSoto Chronicles. Particularly, we will be looking at La Florida del Inca, the first book by a Native American about what would become the United States. Now, there's a quick history lesson. Hernando de Soto with his army landed off La Florida, Tampa Bay in 1539. He died along the Mississippi River in 1542. There are four principal narratives of this disastrous account. There is an account by, of the disastrous expedition. There's an account in Portuguese by the gentleman or the Fidalgo of Elvis. There's a short relacion by Luis Hernandez de Biedma, a third account by Rodrigo Ronhel, and the fourth, the one we'll be focusing on today, La Florida del Inca. El Inca Garcilaso's Florida. One can turn to any number of historical studies, ethnographic studies, archaeological studies, route studies on Hernando de Soto, although, at least in the United States, the literature has received far less attention. With that lack of attention, people haven't really thought about the genre of the narrative. That's really important because the genre sets up the expectations and therefore how is the story being told and what can be said. With that in mind, let's look at two different versions of the same events. In this case, Juan Ortiz, who was, who was um, held captive from the Narvaez expedition of 1528. Notice how on the left with the Rodrigo Ranjel, the narrative keeps spooling forward in time. That's because the chronicle or the account cannot really go backwards. It only goes in one direction and we get a loss of perspective as a result during all that week and thus Tuesday the 3rd of June, the next day at the time the sun was setting and as the Christians ran forth without losing time. This narrative loses no time in trying to provide both sides of the invasion of America. Where is the native perspective? We don't have time for that. On the other hand, we have the history by El Inca Garcilaso de la Vega, La Florida del Inca. Because of the genre that he's working with, El Inca Garcilaso can go back and forth. And with that moving back and forth across time, we gain perspective. When Panfilo de Narvaez had come to the province, he had waged war with Prince here, King Hirohuiga, and later he had converted the Indian to friendship. Then for some unknown reason, he had committed certain abuses against the cacique, which are of too odious a nature to be told here. Well, all well and good, but what were those offenses too odious to be told? They were pretty hideous. Two chapters earlier, we had learned that Narvaez had killed the cacique's mother and cut off the chief's nose. Pretty gruesome stuff. Outrage knows no forgiveness, El Inca Garcilaso explains. And notice how he loops back to give a native version of events. Each time that Hirohuiga recalled how the Spaniards had cast his mother through the dogs and permitted them to feed upon her body, and each time he attempted to blow his nose and failed to find it, the devil seized him, or I'd say anger, with the thought of avenging himself of Juan Ortiz, as if that young man had deprived him of his nostrils. <clears throat> we get a sense of perspective. We at least have a reason why here Huiga would mistreat the Spanish. And besides ethnic or racial background, El Inca Garcilaso being of mixed race would want to relay the encounter from two different perspectives. I think genre also must be considered. A history can move back and forth. And with that movement back and forth, you get perspective. I'd like you to take that lesson of not only Spanish literature, of different genres of the invasion of America, but think about it in terms of our present, maybe as you're watching television. What is the genre at work and what stories can be told within that genre? You find that you get a lot of different insight into how stories are being told. Thank you very much.